So America's gun problem isn't getting any better. Over the last weekend, 60 people were shot in Chicago, including an 11-year-old girl. Five were killed. 17 people were shot in Cleveland, and all of that happened within 24 hours. At least nine people were shot at a block party in New Orleans. Six people were shot, three fatally, at a graduation party in Miami. Five people were shot during a drive-by shooting during a graduation party in Salt Lake City. Four people were shot in Portland, Oregon. At least four people were killed in shootings across Indianapolis. As extensive as that list was, it comes no way, nowhere near close to including all of the shootings that have taken place just this past weekend. We have a gun problem in America, and we're not getting any closer to fixing it in any form. On Friday, a federal judge in California overturned the state's long-standing ban on assault weapons. The judge compared the AR-15 to a Swiss Army knife, calling it, quote, the perfect combination of a home defense weapon and homeland defense equipment. California Governor Gavin Newsom called that comparison a slap in the face to the families who've lost loved ones to this weapon. The state is expected to challenge the ruling in court. Joining me now is gun safety advocate Fred Gutenberg. His daughter Jamie was killed in the Parkland school shooting back in 2018. Thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you for having me. Um, listening to you read through so it, more it, than- it, 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 is, it is mind-boggling. <laughs> It is my, it is, well, I want to start there. So it is mind boggling, Fred, right? Uh, More than 8,400 people have died from gun violence in the United States this year. Remember, we're in a pandemic. (laughs) So that, that, that's a startling number considering the fact that this year has been so different. That's a 23% increase compared to this time last year. But in Congress, we just don't see anything happening at all. They're doing nothing. What is your reaction to the fact that they refuse to take on this issue uh, and do something about it? Well, first, the gun violence increase was predictable because we had the gun violence surge last year through the pandemic and people are getting out again. Um, and, and the thing is, the House is doing something about it. The House is passing legislation that 90 percent of Americans are saying they want. The president has said he will sign the legislation that 90 percent of Americans say they want, but we have the Senate. And I just I need to call BS at this point on Senator Manchin's rationale. I respect and I appreciate his desire for bipartisanship. Americans voted. And bipartisanship is passing this legislation because we have a non-governing party who has decided to check out doing everything you can to get them to change their mind won't work. At this point, work with the Democrats to get the legislation that Americans want to a vote and let the Republicans show up to vote for it. It's really quite simple. Well, it feels to me like that uh, framing of this issue is accurate, right? This is a a majority issue. There are gun owners out there that support this legislation. So elaborate a little bit more on your message to Senator Joe Manchin. He is obviously uh, the man of this hour and uh, the the near future. Um, But elaborate on your message to him, because basically he's standing in the void saying, it's too partisan if we, we go about uh, through the filibuster to do voting or gun rights or any of the things that Americans poll it, polled say they want. Um, but even gun owners in West Virginia support this legislation. Yeah. L- listen, gun owners do. You can be a gun owner and support gun safety. So when you're in the way of doing something about gun violence, You are no longer doing the bipartisan work that the voters sent you to do. So the fallacy is that he says he's trying to behave in a bipartisan way, but he's not. Okay, only one party right now is actively trying to meet the bipartisan will of voters. And it is not, unfortunately, the non-governing party. I I don't want to call them the Republican Party anymore because the old Republican Party didn't behave this way. So it is it is horrific that we are in this situation because of one guy. Well, it's, it's actually, it's more than him. 
But I think if he changes his mind, the others will as well. But he has put himself out there in front on this. And he says it's about bipartisanship. Right now, he is the roadblock to bipartisanship. And I hope at some point he comes to understand that. You know, it feels in some ways like not only we're not doing what the American people want, the majority of them on gun safety, but in some states they're going backwards. Texas just made it legal to carry a handgun without a permit, which really feels like a terrible idea. And now California's assault weapons ban is being overturned because of this judge. How do you keep the faith that real change is possible when you have states out here going backwards on this issue? Well, listen, and you're 100% right. Texas did way more than just the permitless carry. They've done a whole bunch of other things in the past month that are horrific. And you do have this judge who very intentionally um, gave a, he's an activist judge who gave a very bad ruling. And he knows he gave a bad ruling because his intention is for it to be overturned and go to the Supreme Court. How do I keep hope? Because... Tomorrow, my daughter should be graduating. My daughter, I should be sitting in a high school graduation tomorrow and getting ready to watch my daughter get ready for college. And I won't. And I, my voice wasn't part of this before she was killed, but I'm in this now and I, and I believe in democracy. And I believe if we keep pushing hard, we can get it done. Um, you know, it's, I see you putting on the screen my tweet from earlier. It's the reason why I started this hashtag, hashtag dads for gun safety. You know, moms have been really vocal and amazing and the kids have been vocal and amazing. I need to get the dads to show that, yes, you can be a gun owner and for gun safety and to demand, to demand that we do something. And the best way to send a message to Washington, D.C. right now, we can't march We can't do all the old things. Let's do it through social media. Let's make hashtag dads for gun safety the biggest hashtag of all time. I asked for a million on Twitter earlier. Let's go bigger than that. Let's send the message to the Senate. You can't stand still. Do the people's work. Do what you were sent there to do. We voted in a bipartisan way. The polls are clear. Get it done. So I love this idea because I think, obviously, Moms Demand Action and uh, all of the Parkland kids that uh, did the uh, March for Our Lives after the massacre, you know, dads, you're right. They have um, been left out in the sense that they haven't stepped forward like you in a large group. Do you think that it's it actually would be really helpful to the conversation about gun safety to have more dads out front because part of the conversation yeah. is linked to this sort of performance of tox- toxic masculinity. Like the, the, the whole gun thing, the, you know, I, I can't get rid of my guns is sort of a masculine thing. And having dads out front saying, no, we can get gun safety legislation passed, that actually could move the needle a bit. Listen, I hope so, because you know what? The entire idea that you can't be a gun owner and for gun safety was always BS. It was always BS. And this whole notion that gun safety is against the Second Amendment was always BS. And who better to make that clear than dads, that gun owners, who better to send the message, we care about our kids. We want to save their lives. We care about our spouses. We care about our parents. We get it. Listen, I hang out. I have friends who own guns. My father-in-law owns guns. This isn't about whether or not someone owns guns. This is about whether or not we're going to put steps in place to keep those who intend harm against us or others, keep them from the ability to get their guns or their ammunition. Dads for gun safety. Let's send the message. It is, it is it, you can be a gun owner and for gun safety, and it is time these senators get it through their thick skull. The time is now. Fred Gutenberg, thank you so much, as always, for joining us, and please stay safe. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen, and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.